Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Caleb, and this is the very first video in your Web3 programming series for beginners. So this is going to take you from knowing nothing to building smart contracts on top of a blockchain. Now, that's a lot of big words, and for a beginner course, it wouldn't really make sense to just assume you know everything. So we're going to start with the basics. What is a blockchain? And all these things can seem kind of abstract and new, and that's one of the great things with Web3. It's like, it's like you're starting over. So if you already have development experience, it's going to be still quite the learning curve moving over to Web3. But not everything that you've studied is lost because it's going to be very similar. The programming languages that you use and the tools that you use, it's just a new way of thinking about things. So to start off a blockchain, you can think of it just as a database that's a permanent record. And typically this is for transactions, sending cryptocurrency from one person to another. Now, having heard of a cryptocurrency might be a prerequisite for this course, but it's a digital money. You can think of like Bitcoin or Ethereum. These are cryptocurrencies, digital money built on top of a blockchain. But blockchains are not only allow you to send cryptocurrency, they allow you to build applications on top of the blockchain. And the reason you would want to do this is because some of the fundamental principles of blockchains can allow you to make applications that are different than normal applications. One big reason you might want to build an application on a blockchain is decentralization. So the whole idea of blockchain is that we don't have to rely on a centralized entity or node that can control the entire network. So again, lots of big words, but think of a social network that you might use on a daily basis. Maybe that's Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, whatever it may be. Well, the company that offers this social media, they own that website and they own a lot of the data on that website and it's really controlled and owned by that centralized entity, the company that owns the social media network. Well, if you introduce a blockchain into this, instead of everything being centralized to one location, it's now going to be decentralized across the entire world and that software is going to run on thousands of computers. So if I write some software and I want to deploy this to the Ethereum network, it means that any node, any computer in the entire world can run the Ethereum software and my software, which is built on top of that, can execute on any of those nodes. So if I wanted to put a stop to that software, I would have to control the entire Ethereum network or at least a very large percentage of the network, like 50% of the network. That's very difficult because you can't just easily take over everybody's computer in the entire world. So blockchain at its core is known to be decentralized. And because of this, the applications you create on top of a blockchain are often known as dApps, decentralized apps. Now, the thing that makes this all possible is cryptocurrency. And every blockchain network is going to have a cryptocurrency that powers the network. So in the case of Ethereum, one of the most popular smart contract blockchains, the cryptocurrency is known as Ether. And it's probably smart to just familiarize yourself with a bunch of different cryptocurrencies out there so you have a better idea of the blockchain ecosystem. So for that, I wanted to introduce you to the sponsor of this video, which is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is an app where you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies, get more information about each cryptocurrency, and see its price over time. This has been one of my favorite places to buy and sell cryptocurrency, but my favorite thing about Crypto.com is their debit card. So this is a debit card that allows you to use your crypto balance to pay for things just like a normal debit card but you can top it up using your cryptocurrency balance. And the amazing thing about this is you get a lot of rewards for doing so. So specifically, when you sign up, you can stake a cr cryptocurrency known as Kronos, which is the crypto.com cryptocurrency. And staking just means to set aside that cryptocurrency. You will lock up those funds for a period of time and then get them back when you're done. And if you stake $400, you will get the Ruby Steel debit card and get a $25 bonus. On top of this, you can get 100% cash back in crypto with a Spotify purchase. So now you can get free Spotify. So if you wanna get started with cryptocurrencies, 
and you want to get free rewards and a $25 bonus, then check out the Crypto.com app in the App Store and use the referral code Caleb, C-A-L-E-B, which is me, for us to both get that $25 bonus when you stake for the Ruby Steel debit card or higher. Now, let's get back to the video. We're going to start with the most basic thing, which is getting a wallet. So a wallet allows you to receive and send cryptocurrency. And the most popular one right now for Web3 development is the MetaMask wallet. And this is a Chrome extension. So you can see here on my browser, I have this little fox up in the corner and this is the MetaMask extension. And you can see here, I am on the Ethereum mainnet. Mainnet just means the official version as opposed to these test networks, which we'll look into those soon. So this, what you're looking at is real money. I have 0.05 ETH and it is valued at $87. So how do you get cryptocurrency in your MetaMask wallet? Well, for development, you can actually use testnet cryptocurrency. And we'll explore the differences between testnet and mainnet. You'll quickly understand that when you start developing applications. Basically, we need a testing environment where we can experiment and we're not putting funds at risk. So starting out, you're not going to need that real cryptocurrency. However, if you ever do, that's where a website like crypto.com would come in where you can exchange your fiat money like USD for a cryptocurrency and then you could send it to your MetaMask wallet. So you can get MetaMask at metamask.io and then download. They also have it for iOS and Android. I would suggest getting it for Chrome. So once you have MetaMask set up on your computer, you already got your seed phrase. What do you do with the seed phrase? You write it down on probably a physical piece of paper. So I don't suggest taking a photo of it and uploading it to Google Drive or something like that. Not that I've ever done that. I recommend writing it down on something that's not digital and keeping that somewhere safe. Because this is important. You don't want it getting exposed on the internet. And software is good at finding these kinds of things. So you could upload it to something like Google Drive or Google Photos and searching for seed phrase might show that photo. So, you know, if someone got into your accounts, they could just search for that and find all of your monies. Anyways, I was getting sidetracked. Now that you have MetaMask installed, you're good to go for the next video where we're going to start talking about mainnet and testnet and how you can get testnet cryptocurrency.